Well, folks, here's another video that they asked me to host. I think the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies has done remarkable work putting this course together, teaching us about not just the best management practices of what they are, but why they're so important. And in this video, they've asked me to talk about foothold traps, how you select them, what the parts are, how they work, why you, you would think about this one or that one. There's a lot that goes into just the trap selection itself, and that starts with understanding the trap, the pieces of the trap, the, the facets, the features, and why that's important to whatever application you'd use it for. So I'm gonna do my best. Hello and welcome to this trapping series. This is the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies Trapper Education video series. And this is a series about all things trapping. Before we get started, remember, best management practices are great and we're providing you a link of where you can find those. And always check your state and local regulations before setting any trap especially if you are someone who traps in multiple states. The regulation in your state might be different than the regulation in another state. In this video, we're gonna talk about foothold traps. Traps like the mountain men used when they were out here catching beaver centuries ago. Today's foothold traps are quite different than those older traps, but they work off the same principle. An animal steps on the pan of the trap, gets caught, and is held alive by its paw. The foothold trap is the most commonly used trapping device for live capture of fur bearers. In this video, we're going to look at the most common foothold trap types, the pieces and parts that make up a foothold trap, and teach you how to safely set and operate a variety of these foothold traps. The most common types of foothold traps in use today are coil spring traps and long springs. The basic difference between these two as the name implies, is the type of spring mechanism that is used to activate or fire the trap to get the jaws in the closed position. The coil spring trap uses either two or four coil springs to activate the trap, and it's a more commonly used of the two, and it consists of several parts. The dog, the pan, the jaws, the levers, and the coil springs. You'll also notice that all of the pieces are connected to the base plate. You can see how one arm of the coil spring attaches to the base and the other arm attaches behind the lever. The long spring trap has most of the same parts, the dog, the pan, the jaws, except for the levers and the coil springs are a little bit different. With the long spring trap, it uses a leaf type spring or what we call the long spring to activate the trap and the eyelid of the spring functions as a lever to close the jaws. Something else that may be considered a part of the trap is the chain. The chain is what is used to attach the trap to an anchor or a drag system. When a foothold trap is being used on land, it should always have swivels incorporated. Swivels allow a trap to rotate with the animal's foot when it tries to free itself, which helps prevent injury. And placing a shock spring or a lunge spring in the chain is also a good idea. This helps reduce injury and also reduces the chance that the captured animal might pull free. One thing to note when you're anchoring your trap, be sure that you anchor a trap such that your anchor is secure enough to hold the largest animal that you might catch. You will also notice that there is a tag attached to the chain. Most state agencies require the identification of the trapper to be printed on a tag, and that tag is then attached to the trap and chain. That may be your license number, it might be your name or your address, but what you need to do is make sure that you check with your state agency and check those regulations because what they require you to put on the tag varies from state to state. In some coil spring traps, the lever is simply an extension of the spring. So not all trap levers look the same. So now that I've explained the different types of traps, let's see how to set these different types of traps. 
To set the coil spring trap, the first thing you do is you place the trap on a firm surface, maybe your knee or the ground, and you depress the levers to compress the coil springs, bring the dog over the jaws, and insert it into the pan notch. All the time, keep your fingers underneath the loose jaw of the trap and raise the pan from the bottom so to ensure a firm latch of the dog. Next, make sure that the pan is level by holding the trap by the base, reaching under the loose jaw and raising or lowering it. Be sure not to lower it too much or the trap will fire. For a long spring trap, follow the same procedure except that instead of depressing the levers, you depress the spring directly. Some traps are dogless traps. This is considered a dogless trap because there's no dog right there. For larger, more powerful coil spring or long spring traps, you might want to think about using a setter. It's a device that helps you compress the springs. This will make setting the trap easier and safer. There are also a few specialty types of foothold traps. There are guarded foothold traps, which are specifically designed to capture muskrats. There are enclosed foothold traps, sometimes referred to as dog-proof traps or foot encapsulating traps. And these are specifically designed to capture raccoons. And we'll have a whole nother video on these dog-proof traps in this series. You'll wanna go and check that out. Foothold traps are set on land and are typically designed for live animal capture. And the great thing about a foothold trap is that in addition to catching your target animal, if by some strange event you do catch a non-target animal, say a raccoon in your coyote set, and you want to release that raccoon alive, it can be easily done with the help of a catch pole. Foothold traps can be used for many species and in many types of sets. And we'll talk about every one of those possibilities in these upcoming videos. Remember, the parts of a foothold trap, the dog, the pan, the jaws, the levers and the springs, and then the chain which contains swivels, maybe a shock spring, and a trap tag. And always remember when setting these traps, keep your finger underneath the loose jaw so in case the trap fires accidentally, while you're setting it, you won't get your finger in the trap. That covers some of the basics about foothold traps. Thanks for watching.